Good afternoon and welcome to our Halloween Horror Nights extravaganza. I don't know if it's an extravaganza. We're going um, on an RIP tour tonight. It is an extravaganza. <clears throat> I'm very excited. This is my second time at the event. We went to the premium scream night together. That video is up. We had a blast. I will link it down below if you didn't watch it. It was so much fun. A lot of fun. You went on opening night, but I was still editing. The yeah, video. but I didn't really do much on opening night. I was just like, this I is how I walk through the park on opening night. <laughs> Like that. It was a little more laid back, but yeah. tonight, all out. Oh, yeah. We're going all out. So we're leaving the room now. We're going to head over to Universal. We're going to meet our friends over at the Arches, and then we're going to head in for our RIP tour. The RIP tour is a VIP tour, Horror Night style. So this is what's called a private RIP tour. It is us and eight of our friends, so 10 total, mm -hmm. and that's it. It's just us and our friends. There's no other people on the tour with us. It's going to be so much we'll fun. We a tour guide. The tour guide takes us straight to the front of the houses. We don't have to wait in any sort of line. But the cool thing too is that our tour guide, who I think we have the same guide that we had last year. We'll, we'll see when we get up to the um, up to Universal, but we get so much cool information, so much just like fun behind the scenes, trivia. I just can't wait to share all of this with you. So yeah. let's head over. All right, here we are. We have arrived at the arches and we're not following the crowd in. We're going off to the right over here to the VIP entrance. All right, we are up here at the arches. Uh, we're going to meet some friends kind of like right over here somewhere. All of our friends that are going on the tour with us, we you meet kind of like here and then you head back to the VIP building. Right. Which is where we go upstairs and we have like a little... A little reception. Yeah. Some light bites. And then we can actually watch the opening ceremonies from above, which is one of the cool perks yeah. of the RIP tour, having such a good shot of the opening ceremony. I, and because they're up higher too this year, I think that'll be awesome. Oh yeah, you oh. also get to see the crowd of people down below you too. Yeah, I feel like, like that's... the energy is like emanating up yes, from them. Yes, it really hypes you up. Yeah. I'm so excited. All right, so here it is. This is the Universal Studios Administration Building. And this right here is the VIP tour entrance. And so we're just kind of at the end of this line, making our way up to check in for the event or for the tour. All right, so we have entered into the VIP tour room. And this is a neat, oh look, they got spiders on the wall. There's all of these paintings on the wall. And then if you look kind of over here, they tell you who all of the paintings are. Like Orson Welles, there's Orson Welles. That's uh, Geraldine Page from Beguiled. I want to do this picture. Oh, okay. What it's happens like in Beguiled? A spooky prom. I feel like um, we should watch that movie before we recreate that photo. That's what that is? Yeah. Oh, I think who knows? Was, I well, think it was a scary movie. Maybe. Yeah. Could be a love story. It looks scary. They said they were teasing us with the AC, but I feel no. Is the AC in the room with us? Because I don't feel it. They're just teasing us with the AC vents. <laughs> these, these vents are fake. <laughs> as soon as we got up to the top, they gave us an RIP tour button where horror lives and you can only get this on an RIP tour. So we had mentioned being able to see the opening ceremonies and we did, however, miss them just by a little bit. So they've already started letting people in though. You can see the large crowd of people down there funneling in this direction and all the way back to the arches back there. So you can see there are a lot of tours in here right now. Everybody is part of the reception and I wanted to just point out some of the food that we've got here. We've got some fresh vegetables, some of which are raw and some of which are cooked. Some fruits, some salads, some cheeses, assorted cheeses. Oh man, we love assorted cheese. And of course we've got some spooky decorations throughout. Oh, okay, we're getting the Abbott's Farm corn chowder. And you can add your own shrimp. So I could try this without the shrimp. Some spinal column pinchos, fresh grilled chicken tender skewers with red chimichurri. These are the pepperoni pizza coffins. I love that. Like they're little like pepperoni pizza guys with some marinara and dipping sauce. Heading over to Carrie Drive-In, you've got the vegan walking taco. You have to kind of build it yourself. You get a bag of Fritos that they've already cut open for you. And then you add in the various toppings that you like into the bag, right into the bag. On the other side of the room, we've got some chocolate macaroons. Oh yeah, some vegan blondies. A little ghosty boys, little ghost cookies. These, these are Funfetti mini cupcakes with little spiders on them. And then these are guava cheese empanadas. Oh yeah. And then we've got a little taco stand over here. We've got all the fixings for you to make your own pork carnitas tacos. White rice, black beans, fresh cilantro, some pineapple salsa, as well as some Tabasco in the back. 
some more decorations, just eggs. A bowl full of eggs. Mistletoe leaf, oh. So bottles of water are included on the tour here at the beginning, but then you can also get some various alcoholic drinks. A little juice, a margarita, and you can get a blinky cup too. You can buy a blinky cup. And all these different, oh. And you can get all these different beers or wines back here as well. All right, so I'm able to try the Abbott corn chowder from the Quiet Place booth without the shrimp. So. There's no shrimp in the base. There's no shrimp in the base. It's good, it's nice and potatoey. A little bit of a tomato. It's less thick. When I had it the other night, it was so incredibly thick. Oh. This is more like the consistency that it should be. Yeah. A little bit of a tomato after taste to it. Is it? But yeah, there's a little tiny bit of tomato. Let in me there. have a tiny bite. Okay. Um, you catch it tomato? tastes like um, red pepper. Okay, and then there's corn, of course, in there. Yeah. Good. I like it. Very hearty. It is nice hearty. For a hot day. <laughs> what do you guys think so far? Food is really good. Uh, the chowder is really good. I added, you can add shrimp to it. Yeah. So, yeah, for shrimp. Sure. <laughs> that's what they eat in the quiet place. They love shrimp chowder. Yes, that's what they <laughs> I had the quiet beans last night. Yeah, the beans. Yeah. But what, what happens when the beans, beans, and musical fruit, when they make you two, then the well, monsters are going to come. I, I wanted them to be quiet, but they weren't. <laughs> All right, so we have made our way down from the upstairs, out of the VIP entrance stairs, and into the park. So now we will begin our Halloween Horror Nights experience. So, Hi. Olivia is our tour guide, <laughs> and she's gonna be telling us about the houses and leading us around the park, making mm -hmm. sure that we don't get eaten by any monsters. I'm gonna do my best. Okay, <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> I think you. you'll do great. Thank you so much. So, uh, the first scare zone we're going to go into is Duality of Fear. And that's going to be where we see our two icons for this year. This is sort of the first time that we've had two icons that are both female presenting. They're a little bit androgynous. We have Sinister and Surreal. So Sinister is going to be the sort of physical pain and torment. You're going to see that her outfit is made out of human flesh. And then we have Surreal, who is going to represent the psychological terror, your biggest fears, the ones that kind of haunt the dark parts of your mind. Um, and she sort of represents the vortex of your mind that takes you into that sort of psyche. Uh, that's what her outfit is going to be made out of. You're gonna see some representation of both of those icons in a couple of the other scare zones that we're gonna to go to later. So you can see they're different chainsaw people for different icons. So Sinister would be red with the filleted flesh and Surreal would be the teal color with the different mind aspect, spooky ones. So you can see we are passing by Monstros, but on a VIP tour, you do not take the main entrance to get into the houses. So they do take us straight to the front of the house. And sometimes the way to do that, like in the most um, like practical way, the easiest way is to not go through that main line. It's to go through like a back line. Yeah. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm gonna stop you right there. What? We never go through a line. Oh, like, you know what I mean though? Like a, a back different entrance. En yeah, yeah. I do have to admit, it seems like it's a way less crowded night than it was on opening night last night. However, the wait times are pretty similar to what they were last night. You can see Quiet Place already had a 100 minute wait. So we're gonna do two houses in somewhat like rapid succession. Um, so I'm just gonna talk to you guys out here about them because it is much quieter out here than it is in these uh, little hallways and things that we're taking. But the first house we're gonna go to is gonna be a quiet place. Everybody goes shh. But I don't want you to do that because that's no fun, right? So we are going to be following the story of the first two movies. Has everybody seen those movies? No. Oh, wow. It's all the, the first one. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's all right. Um, we're going to be following that storyline of the Abbott family. And they're living in sort of a post-apocalyptic world where you have to stay silent to stay alive, right? They do have a deaf daughter, um, and her name is Reagan. And so they are learning sign language to sort of communicate with her. And then, obviously, when the monsters come down, they're called death angels. When they come down, um, they already have that skill, right, to be able to speak sign language and communicate with each other. So we kind of go on a journey with them. Uh, we have a little bit of the first movie and a lot of the second movie. Uh, and the Abbott family decides what better thing to do than to have another baby, right? And I know some of you guys know that's not exactly the quietest process, 
right? Uh, so we're gonna see iconic scenes. If you've seen the movies, we're gonna see the nail scene and all that good stuff. Um, so just please stay quiet and stay alive, or not. That's more fun. Another like thing that is included in the RIP oh tour yeah. is you can get on any rides that you want to, too. So if we wanted to ride Rip Ride Rocket tonight, we could. I thought for sure it was going to come back over top of us. Here it comes. Hey. We're doing it. We're getting ready. You gotta be quiet. Be quiet or be food. Oh yeah, that's what they told us last night. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be eating. All right, so we just got done in a quiet place. I still didn't love all the babies crying. That makes me like, it just kind of makes me sad. Right. I didn't love that. That was less scary, more like triggering. But um, everything else really, I got a few good scares. I like going through the second time because then you know I like get the storyline. Yes, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this happening. Well, tell me, okay, what was the, the one that was in the bed? There was one in the bed with somebody. So that was the baby. Oh, that was... It was coming out from underneath the bed and it was like looking in the crib. Oh my gosh. And the baby was asleep and the mom was asleep. I hate that. Yeah. I Spooky, absolutely right? hate that, yes. But it was a really good run through. We had a, we had a good run through. Even being in the conga line, we still got some really good scares. Yeah. I screamed at least four times. Oh. At least four, maybe about three. <laughs> about three times, yes. Screamed about, about three, three times. <laughs> the house was super dark. Oh yeah. And um, I don't know, it didn't, none of them got me as far as being scared, but it was fun because I liked the movies. Uh, it was a fun house. Okay, but you yeah. had it like, would you say it was a good run through or bad, good or bad? <laughs> I didn't get any jump scares. Okay. So. Sorry, I know we're really, we're sharing a microphone, so we, yeah. got, we got real close. No problem. <laughs> Monstros. The Monsters of Latin America. We are going to the Cemeterio de los Perdidos. It is the Cemetery of the Lost. And we are gonna be guided not by me, but by Muerte, death himself. He's taking us on a lovely tour, and we're gonna meet three different Latin American monsters. Uh, the type of monsters that people's mothers and grandmothers have kind of told them about over the years, but sort of just old wives' tales, you know. Uh, don't do that bad thing I don't want you to do because you're gonna get attacked by La Lechuza, who is a sort of anamorph, half owl, half woman. Uh, we are also going to see El Silbon, uh, the backbone little tooth that you guys got earlier. Yeah, he likes his baby back ribs and he likes to snatch him right from your back. So we're gonna go right into his sack of bones and see exactly how he does that. We are also going to see Talawel Pucci. And Talawel Pucci kind of is this green mist and she likes to feast on young babies. So that's a little trigger warning for you as well. I'm not sure if we make it out of this one alive and you'll see that at the end. Now we are headed over to Monstros, the, the Monstros of Latin America. I'm very excited for this one because this was the one that we went through first yeah. uh, in our first like night at Halloween Horror Nights and it was very scary. We had a really good run through. Yeah. I want to see if that holds up. So Olivia, our tour guide, just told us that a lot of the animatronics in there were shipped to us direct from Hollywood because they used, that house came from Hollywood. They, they it wasn't the exact same house. Not the exact same one, but it was the same name. Yeah, like the same theme, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it was the Monsters of Latin America. I will say, so one thing I was worried about was after going through the premium screen night, I was worried that the houses would be less scary because we're not being pulsed through, meaning we're all going through, yeah, we're in a conga line all going through together, I still got a lot of scares in that house. Yeah. That was a strong house. Also, I do have to say, the entire time we were going through El Cebon section, all I could think of was, I want my baby back, baby back, <laughs> baby back, baby back. Baby. Well, I didn't realize, so when we went through, I didn't know the storyline. So yeah. it's cool. These, one thing about the tour, not one thing, one of the things about these tours is you really, I, now that I've gone through, I know what to look for. Yeah. So El Sabon is eating the people's, like he's ripping their spinal column out and eating their like ribs. Yeah. And then the, the chicken lady, not a chicken. She's an owl. She's an owl. I had no idea. I thought she was a chicken. And then I didn't realize that the one who eats the babies is a green mist. It's like a mist. It's not even a person. I also didn't realize the guy with the great hat, death him. Himself. Yes, he's dead. And he's a great singer. <laughs> Did he sing I Want My Baby Back? No, he sang at the beginning of the at the beginning of the house. Oh yeah. A lot of you guys mentioned that I talked a lot in the first video. I just have to say, I don't get out much. So this <laughs> is like let me have my time. You're just excited. I'm so excited. I'm let just me be excited. excited. To be here. Yes. Uh, oh, one of the El Sabones turned to me and he said, Delicious. <laughs> 
I love that. And I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm sure I am. <laughs> but you can't have my bones. Take, take a bite. Just take a nibble. No bones, though. <laughs> I'm bone, boneless. <laughs> my bones are crazy. <laughs> so something that I wanted to mention. Whoa, people are getting a little wild. For the quiet place. You gotta be quiet. Actually, no, let him talk. Let him yap. Oh, yeah. Let the monsters eat him. <laughs> the people behind them you know oh, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta somebody has to be a sacrifice I think. true true but so okay really quick when we were walking into a quiet place we met some people that said the line was 60 minutes but because they had expressed they only waited 20 minutes just to give you an idea of the real wait versus the express wait versus the RIP wait which was zero minutes right so there you go so we're about to go into insidious the further as you can see because it's the furthest one away from where we were before we've done insidious before but this one's a little different because instead Instead of following a particular storyline from a particular film, we are just going into the further itself. So we're going to see all of the demons from all of the movies, uh, most notably the red face demon, the bride in black, uh, the key face demon. We're going to see all of them. Basically, we learn that there is this place called the further, and it's going to be a realm way beyond our own where tortured souls are lost and they're trapped. And they're very evil and spooky. This is going to probably be the scariest house we go in tonight. Um, is everybody ready? Yeah. Cool. All right, we just got out of Insidious. A lot of people saying this is the scariest house of the year. I got a lot of really good scares. I was nervous that the houses were not going to be as scary tonight because we're going through with more of a conga line. I got so many scares, so I think that speaks to how scary this house really is. Now, I do want to say the scares are what I would call barrage scares. What is that? means that they are coming at you from three or four different angles. Oh, I agree. I so, agree. I think that adds to the scare factor. Yes. As opposed to some of the other houses where they're just like, one person comes out here, there might be a redirect scare. Yeah. Okay. I did get a scare in a mirror, which I was very unique to me. That was such a good scare. Yeah, it's cool. You're you're coming in and you're looking at the mirror, yeah. and normally it is a fake mirror, and they'll jump out through the mirror, as in like, ah, it's a fake mirror type thing. But in this case, it was a real mirror, and they were behind me. Right, so when you walk by, you don't think there's gonna be anything behind it, but there was a scary person behind it. No, behind you. No, behind the mirror too. No, no. Yes, there was. I saw was it. Was it? No, I, I thought that was just the reflection. I, I looked at her and I was like, that was a good scare. Oh, you're, I think we're talking about different scares. Two different spots. Two oh different gosh. mirror <laughs> scares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there mine was, was the red faced demon. Oh, mine was the old lady, the one with like the black lace over oh, her. Oh, yeah, the yeah, black so, ride. Is that what she's called? I think so. So basically, it was you're looking at a mirror and you, um, you don't think that there's anything behind the wall, but then there was a bride behind the wall goes, eh. And ah. so I was like, that was so good. I made sure she knew that it was a good scare. She got me. Yeah. And she said, thank you. She did. She didn't I've say been anything. trying my hardest. <laughs> She's like, well, I really appreciate that. Yeah. No, she didn't. But I could see it in her eyes, you oh, know? These but eyes. Also, uh, the other thing that was I didn't mention, I think, in the other video is that there were lots of mannequins, <laughs> lots of rooms yeah. full of mannequins. So they, those were good scares as well. That it, never get, it like never gets old, and I think there were three or four rooms of just mannequins, and it, it really never got old. It was very scary. Good, very good. So now we're gonna go into Triplets of Terror. Let's hear about that one. Our next house is Triplets of Terror. Uh, we were just talking a little bit about like trigger warning, dead animal. It's a little bit disturbing, and it is takes place in the laundry room. So if you go into a place that looks like a laundry room, um, maybe go like this but also like this, so you can see where you're going. Um, <laughs> cool, so triplets of terror. If having triplets was not enough of a terror, these triplets are gonna really scare you, all right? We're gonna be seeing the Barmy triplets, Harmony, Melody, and Junior, on their ninth birthday. It takes place March 3rd, 1984, right? That is a day before my birthday, not the year. Um, <laughs> don't ask the year, but um, so I survived so far, so hopefully we can survive this. Uh, we kind of see their first killing. Uh, we see how sort of ritualistic it is, right? Uh, we've been invited to their birthday party. We walk in and it's not as fun as everybody thought it would be. So then we go into sort of a scene of a crime podcast, right? They're trying to figure out what's the motive because every 10 years on their birthday, they perform the same ritualistic killing. A random person in a random place, a random family, there's no motive behind it. They're just horrible people, pretty much. So now, present day, March 3rd, 2024, we are gonna see their most recent 
killing and we're gonna see that the first scene looks identical to the last one that we're walking into again I don't know if we make it out of this one but there's some pretty cool little Easter eggs in here like when we walk in we're gonna see the facade of the house uh, and the house is gonna say 3324 HHN 33 uh, 2024 a lot of nods to like the year of HHN and the year that it is currently Woo. you guys ready to go in yeah something else cool about triplets that I forgot to mention is that usually we feature like a slasher film right an IP an intellectual property or something at Halloween Horror Nights where it's just like brutal murders this is gonna be Universal's first shot at making our own sort of slasher horror just terrible people doing terrible things so if you like it hopefully we'll get some more of that original content in the future um, if not eh, yikes <laughs> I love all the Easter eggs the tours are really great about giving you the Easter eggs that you wouldn't normally see because you're going through so quickly yeah we so, have a lot of 33 homages and like uh, imagery, imagery yeah. this year but yeah, so should we go in? Let's do it. I'm excited. Alright, so we just got out of Triplets of Terror. I have to ask you this. Yes. Are you more of a Melody, a Harmony, or a Junior? <laughs> Those Who are the, the triplets. Bunny? I like the girl the in the bunny. The bunny yeah. is Harmony. She seems like a Harmony. She yeah. was laughing about everything. Yeah. She found like positivity and like laughter in bad situations. Right, yeah. I like Snowblower. That. She was very <laughs> excited about the snowblower. I like that. I like that finding positivity in every moment, you yeah. know? She was the hyperactive one, she, jumping around. She really was very excited, yes. And then Olivia told us that there were, there are three arches throughout. So it is uh, Harmony is the smallest one. Mm -hmm. Melody is the middle. Junior's the big guy. Okay. Uh, and there are arches throughout that are those three sizes. Okay. So look for that as you're going through. I don't. I thought it was a really good run through. I got some good scares. Yeah. That was another one that had a good mirror scare when you were walking. I think it was actually in the laundry room. There, you think you're looking at a mirror. You don't think there's going to be anybody behind it. There was a the big junior guy was behind it. Also, Junior's got some like fun anime eyes. Oh, does he? He's got really big eyes. They're like this oh, big. Oh, his mask. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Um, but yeah, it was a great run through. I feel like I'm I'm very positive. Uh, I'm very what's the word? Imp uh, Enthusiastic, impressed. Like having like a I'm happily yeah, entertained, surprised. Just, uh, <laughs> Modern miracle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like I'm like happily surprised. That's pleasantly not, surprised. Yeah, that's what it is. I was trying to think of the term, but I'm ha pleasantly surprised that the houses are still fun even with the conga line. Yeah. We're getting a lot of good scares tonight. It's good. So got a lot of energy coming out of the houses. So we're about to go into Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Yay! I know I love it. This house is so gorgeous. So this one's gonna be following the newest movie. We're gonna be traveling back to the firehouse where it all started with the Spangler family and. And now the original Ghostbusters are teaming up with them in their secret ghost busting lab that's now underneath the New York City Firehouse. And unfortunately, they've come into possession of sort of an ancient artifact. It's a little golden orb. And inside of that ancient artifact, there is a spirit named Garaka. All right. And Garaka wants to bring on the second Ice Age, which I know a lot of us would appreciate in this Florida weather. Uh, but the Ghostbusters, they don't like it so much. And so we're going to follow them in that story and try to defeat Garaka. I will warn you, Garaka is on stilts. He's a little scary and spooky. Um, but hopefully after this house, we're all going to know. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, right? Lydia. Cool. Aww, don't call me. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> all right, so now we are headed up to the Fallon balcony for uh, a little refreshment. We're going to get some drinks up there, kind of relax in the AC a little bit. So there he is. Jimmy Fallon is beckoning us forward. We're heading in through the Race Through New York building. Just as a little warner, it is getting dark outside, so I did switch to the big camera. So it is gonna get a little bit shakier. So we are heading towards the VIP section here to the VIP balcony. And hashtag the panda is often up here waving at guests. And you can see this is where they stand most often. So at this little stopping point in the tour, we can get any sort of liquors or beers and special drinks for a for a fee you can pay for these things you can pay for bottled water but they also have this little water guy right here that you can get water out of and they have all the windows open so we can look out upon the event and we're gonna go out on the balcony too but there it is and there is also a exterior area on the balcony out here where you can come outside and get an even better view of the crowds out there look at that it's not too bad tonight not a huge crowd what are they yelling like if this overlooked the scare zone that's the only thing that would make this better so we got a little insider tip from olivia last year 
every single house had a frog of some kind hidden somewhere within the house. So Laura Salls, who is uh, like the head of, I think the head of HHN now, right? She is part of the HHN team. She's like a big deal yeah. within HHN. You, like, so her biggest fear is frogs. So they put a frog in every single house, which is kind of, kind of mean. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're scared of this? Get ready. But this year, uh, somebody's afraid of snails, I guess. <laughs> so every house has a snail in it. Uh, which I thought was really cool. Another thing that she was telling me that I didn't realize is that um, I've heard a lot of people talking about Otis. And I'm like, who is that? Is that somebody in a house? So it's the arch. Oh. You know the picture of like the creepy arch with like the double eyeball? Yeah. It's on all the merch. That's who Otis is. He's the arch. Mm -hmm. And so Sinister and Surreal are sisters. They're supposed to be sisters, but they were sisters born of Otis. Okay. And so they were... In the commercial, there's like a sack, like a okay. like a scary yeah, yeah. sack, which is what they were born in. They were under the the ground here at Horror Nights, here at Universal, and they were just like festering for years until eventually they were born. And now gotcha. they're here and they're scaring us. They're iconic characters here at Horror Nights. I thought when I saw that commercial that that was the rotting stone. Ah, oh, the from, erotic stone. Yeah, I thought that that's what that was, but it's not. You're telling me that that's Otis. It's like... The sack yeah, they, is Otis. They were born of that sack. Otis the sack. Yeah, which I was... Very interesting stuff. These are This is stuff that I would have never known yeah. if we hadn't gone on this tour. Right. So that's something that I really enjoy about the tour. It's it's There's a lot of perks, but I think some of the perks are knowledge. Yeah. Just like learning, learning things that I would never have known. All right, so now, after that little pit stop, I'm making another pit stop over at Cafe La Bamba to get a little bit more food. And then we will continue on our path through scare zones, through houses, just having, having a good time, having the times of our lives. So uh, Cafe La Bamba is open to the RAP tours as like a, they do like a little mini buffet. They do regular savory food and desserts until a little after nine. And then after that, it's just desserts. Oh. So we're gonna go get our just desserts here. Unless there's some savory food too. Over there at the HHN bar is a spot where you can meet and greet and take photos with some of the original characters from some of the original houses. Welcome to welcome to Lel's Dying. Hope you enjoy some of our Lel's. There's a cash change happening for the characters that are up on the stages at the meet and greet. Oh, that's fun. Ooh, he's licking his fingers. So in between the Demon Queen scare zone and the Swamp of the Undead Scare Zone is Cafe La Bamba. And that's where we can have another little, little refreshment stop. The Hollywood Hotel. Okay, 13th annual Halloween ball. Reception, cocktail hour, silent auction, Kitty Mikulski live. Costume contest and then last call. Man, we showed up just in time. It's nine o'clock right now. We gotta go see Kitty Mikulski. Same sort of stuff that we had before with the flour tortillas and each of the signs telling you what the different food items are has a different room number. It's like a room tag for the Hollywood Hotel. Oh, and then vegan churros with some chocolate dipping sauce here. And then like a, a salad bar, but also some salsa. Oh uh, yes, and then we get some pizza fries. Bloody goodie bag. Where's this at? Is that this? Crispy chicken chunk with fries, peppers, onions mixed in the sauce contains peanuts. Is that this? Street corn riblets! And then we got some uh, various charcuterie, roasted vegetables, some fruits, and we got some tres leches, and then our little ghosty, our little ghosty guys again. Look at us, we got the perfect view for Kitty Mikulski live. Diamond Hendrick and the people's player. She's the queen of the Halloween ball. Yeah, I'll be, I'm first in line, look at me. Got a front row spot to see her. She's got her fur on there as well. So up on the Fallon balcony, there was not free sodas and waters, but here at La Bamba, there are. This is great. I love that there's the bear. This is the HHN bear. He's hanging out here. All right, I've determined it. I could die happy if there was a way every Halloween to decorate our house to look like this. Oh my gosh, I love it in here. Or. If I could just come eat in here. Just every day. Yeah. Just never This eat. is my dinner table. <laughs> 
I mean, this is really cool. The the vibe is vibing for sure. Yeah, it's very very cool. Is the do they do this in Hollywood at the Hollywood Hotel? They should. Right. I feel like if they don't, it's a missed Hollywood, opportunity. Hollywood, 1939. <laughs> if ghosts aren't real, explain this. Woo! While we're out here, we're gonna talk a little bit about a scare zone that we're gonna walk through called Swamp of the Undead. Um, if you've seen sort of the facade of it, welcome to Florida, right? We're all just one big swamp around here. Uh, I was gonna take you guys to Shrek Swamp, but this one will do just, just in case. So we're gonna walk in, uh, we're gonna see this big shack. And that is gonna be the rent-free shack that these two brothers decide that they're gonna live in for a while because they are living a life of crime. They're gonna be fleeing from that crime in this big giant shack. So they're running this sort of illegal like alcohol business, right? And they have a lot of partners that help them run it. However, those partners are going to threaten, you know, maybe some not so nice things onto the brothers. And so they decide what better way to get rid of them than to just kill them and dump them in the murky swamp. Uh, if I have any Taylor Swift fans around here, yes, no? Well, Karma's not their boyfriend. I'm gonna tell you that much. Because one day, when the brothers are just hanging out in their little shack, they hear this loud groaning noise. And it just so happens that one of the people that they killed off comes back to haunt them as a zombie from the swamp that they dumped all those bodies in. And they think there's just one until they go out to the boat dock and they find out that every single body they dumped into the swamp is coming back for them. And uh, they definitely don't make it out alive. There's uh, an animatronic in the scare zone, which is really cool because there's usually not animatronics in the scare zones. Oh, there it is up there. Those are the two colors. You see them? Oh, I do. Yeah. 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 Magenta and teal. Yeah. Teal is for surreal. I got that because it rhymes. I heard, I heard that too. Yeah. 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 We did it. Ooh, there it is. Museum. Oh, there. We're gonna go see the erotic stone. You used to be on a bench. Production crew only. So we're about to do two houses sort of in like rapid succession. So we're just gonna talk about them both here and now. Uh, the first one we're gonna be going into is the one that you see right behind me. It's gonna be Museum Deadly Exhibits. So we're gonna be going into the International Museum of Folklore, where they have a new centerpiece for the museum, and that is called the Rotting Stone. Now the Rotting Stone comes with a little bit of history, uh, not necessarily history like, oh, it's smelly and stinky. No, lots of carnage. Wherever the stone goes, death follows. Why we brought it here, I don't know, but we're gonna find out, right? So as we go into the museum, we're gonna see that big truck out front. That's what brought the rotting stone. And we're gonna see that there's an evil force that possesses the stone. And now that force is jumping around to all the other exhibits in the museum and possessing them as well. So hopefully we can make it out without being possessed. The rotting stone has been the center of horrific stories for centuries. It is believed to be the cause of the field of bugs and plagues. Its reputation grew when it was heard about growing men. Over a course of 200 years, and continued. So we just got done with Museum Deadly Exhibit. Yes. What did you think? Um, so we had a kind of a weak walkthrough because I think they were doing a cast change. I didn't see a lot of the scares that I remember seeing from the first night. But something that I forgot happened the first time was there were guys that were or people dressed like the wallpaper. Yeah. And I forgot. It gave me very much uh, like American Horror Story vibes. It scared the people in front of us and I was like, those people are scared of walls. Uh, also, there was new scares in there that I didn't see the last two nights. And oh, yeah. that was one of them was in the, the fish exhibit. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they like came around and they like, threw a fish from one side and then came around the other side. Oh. I was like, oh. All right. Man. Yeah, it was it good. Is, it wasn't a great walkthrough though because they were definitely, I think they were either in a cash change or there were just some people missing. Gotcha. So yeah. it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't as strong as it was the first night. And then after that, we went straight into uh, Slaughter Cinema 2. Yeah. And then the next house we're going to go into, highly anticipated for a lot of people, is Slaughter Cinema 2. Notice too, it's a sequel. It was so good, we brought it back again. Now, in Slaughter Cinema 1, there were iconic scenes that became Halloween Horror Nights houses, like Yeti Terror of the Yukon. Uh, the testing for the Yeti house actually happened in the first Slaughter Cinema. And so, as we go into this one, you might want to pay attention because you never know what scenes in this Slaughter Cinema may become a house or a scare zone or anything like that later on. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing for you, but we will see scenes like heavy metal 
Hell 3D, and also my favorite, Mummy Strippers Unwrapped. They bear more than their soul. That one will be really fun and exciting. So are you guys ready to get into these houses? Yeah. Perfect, let's go. We had another bad walkthrough with that one. It was Because a cash that was change. definitely a cash change, yeah. but it was fun because we got stopped a bunch. Well, the thing that was cool, yeah, we got stopped so we could really look at some details, so that was cool. There we got, there's a, there's a there's golf a, cart there's, right there. There's a car coming at us. <laughs> we're, so we're, we're backstage right now, but um, we got to see some more details because we were stopped for a little bit of time so we could really look at some things, so that was cool. Oh, but something that was cool with the cast change is that in one of the rooms, I forget which what, what movie it was, with the, they were like lassoing the aliens, it was like the Demon Wrangler or something like that. Oh, Hatchet and Chains. But I think, was it called like the Demon, Demon Wrangler? Demon Bounty Hunter. That's what it was. So one of the guys has like a lasso type thing. And chains. He, uh, chains, okay, right. <laughs> and he's like pulling the, um, the demon back towards him in a long hallway. But I saw them open the door and switch the guy. Like I saw yeah. them, like he handed him the chain and then the other guy came in. It was so quick. That was such like a seamless cast change. So I, I thought that was very cool. It's neat to see like the operational end of it too. I also wanted to point out that in Mummy Strippers uh, Unwrapped, er, unwrapped you don't have, it's it's uh, equal opportunity strippers. Yeah. We had a male stripper had in there. Had a male stripper in there. So that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that one could definitely Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention too was um one of the one of the stories, which one was it? Was it the 3D the metal one yeah. where you walk through a bed yes. and it's like the guy is split in half? There's just some cool like some cool set like props, like set yeah. pieces in there that are you walk through a guy who was laying on the bed, they split him in half like from his head to his toes in half and then you walk like through his innards his halved body i don't know it's bifurcated it's, it's neat it's very neat yeah so let's find out what we're going into next but our next house is going to be universal monsters eternal bloodlines the universal monsters are very near and dear to my heart it's been my favorite house the past couple of years has been the universal monsters house this year is a little bit different but i do feel like it would be a disservice to go into a universal monsters house without talking a little bit about what universal monsters mean to us and to Universal and to horror fans everywhere. Because at Halloween Horror Nights, they've been scaring us since the 90s, but the Universal Monsters have been scaring us for over 100 years, which is really cool. Um, it's something that brought Universal out of a Great Depression and sort of got us back into the game. And now we're like a beloved horror icon for our HHN event and our uh, partnerships with Blumhouse and horror movies and all that good stuff. Uh, this year, the story, Bloodlines with an S, if you'll notice, not just because we're going in seeing the Bloodlines of monsters, but we are also seeing monster hunters. The Van Helsing family, they are a famous family who is famous for hunting monsters. And so as we go in, we see that Saskia Van Helsing is the last remaining daughter of the Van Helsing bloodline. All of her family was killed off by those darn monsters, right? And so she is very upset. She's very sad. She's stricken with grief and she makes an unlikely ally in The Bride of Frankenstein, somebody that we all know and love very well. They're both in sort of like a detrimental situation where they're both about to die, and instead of trying to kill each other, they team up and they save each other's lives. Now, they are gonna go on a hunt for revenge for She-Wolf and also Ankh Sunamun, who is the mummy princess. They're also gonna be fighting off Dracula's daughter and brides. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, is what I like to say. Uh, and so we're gonna see how that fight kind of plays out. This house has been described as aesthetically beautiful yet terrifying, which is also how all of my exes describe me. So that's <laughs> something really exciting that we're in for. Um, are you guys ready for that? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, when I first went through this house, I thought these were bugs. Oh, yeah. It's the snow. I got the storyline that time. I figured it all out. Yeah, it was much easier to figure out the storyline, so yeah. Van Helsing didn't make it. She died. Does that mean that there's no more like but, monster hunters? Well, yeah, but her friend, Bride, starting maybe the body's missing. Oh. Maybe she's gonna try to reanimate her. Reanimate her. Well, it'll be Van Helsingstein. Happen? Yeah, Van Helsingstein. Yeah. <laughs> Van Helsingstein's monster. I just. I just came up with the next the next thing. <laughs> Let's do it. Somebody call me. Universal. So we're about to go into Goblin's Feast. Yay. Yay. Thanksgiving with your family. That's pretty scary, right? 
equally as scary going into Goblin's Feast, pretty much. Uh, so we are gonna see different cast systems of goblins, hobgoblins, witches, orcs. We're gonna see all those people as they prepare for something that they call Goblin's Feast sort of like Thanksgiving, like what I said before. Um, however, we were invited, but upon arrival, we realized that it's us that's on the menu. It's kind of cool because if you look at the Goblin's Feast sign, when you peer just behind it, it says Human Chop House, and the Goblin's Feast sign is like right in front of it. So we're going in, like belaboring under the delusion that this is gonna be a party, uh, but nah, they just wanna skin us alive, whether it's boiled, broiled, barbecued, um, you know, they like it like that, but they really love it alive and screaming. So I think we're gonna be able to provide some of that for them. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Awesome. The scare actor at the end is my favorite, so make sure you keep an eye on him. So everybody in Knoll Tooth Mountain has to contribute to the Goblin's Feast, right? But you can't expect royalty to give the same as what somebody at the lowest point in the caste system is gonna give. So we go through that storyline in the house where we go in and we see how the lowest in the caste system contributes to Goblin's Feast. And then as you go through, you see step up and up and up until we get into the castle. So it's pretty cool. It's been my favorite house so far. Quiet me. You'll scare the rest of the cattle. Quiet meat. You'll scare the rest of the, the cattle? I don't know. I like to use human. No, it says human chop house, maybe. Yeah, human chop house. Hey. You did it. Good goblins feast. We're passing by nightmare fuel, and you can kind of hear the music coming out and the people cheering in there. We're making our way to our final house, which is going to be Major Sweets. I feel like I've never gone into Diagon Alley during Halloween Horror Nights to see the Death Eaters. said if the moon was made of spare ribs would you eat it <laughs> let me ask you a question yes do you like spooky mimes um i love them death eaters are for you <laughs> come and see the death eaters i thought it was cool i mean it's something different yeah, yeah. so our next scare zone is going to be enter the blum house and that's exactly what we're going to be doing we're going to be entering into some of our favorite blum house movies uh this is sort of the photo opportunity scare zone. If you have a favorite character from a Blumhouse movie, um, Megan is gonna be featured. She's not just a roaming horde like she was last year. We're gonna see some characters from Freaky. We're gonna see some characters from The Purge. And we're gonna see the black phone from the movie. The black phone. We're gonna see the grabber and also the little boy. Um, so, you guys ready to enter the Blumhouse? Ooh, creepy. Ooh. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> oh, me? You want me? Oh, no. <laughs> That is Major Sweets Candy Factory, yay. Um, if you guys were here a few years ago in 2022, we had a scare zone called Sweet Revenge, and this is gonna be the direct prequel to Sweet Revenge. Um, we have all volunteered so graciously to be chaperones at uh, the Progress County field trip. Um, they're a little bit low on chaperones. I guess we might find out why when we go in. But we are gonna be going into Major Sweets Candy Factory to teach those kids the value of hard work, right? However, when we go in, we very soon realize that maybe Major Sweets has some friends and also some nefarious purposes for inviting us in. Uh, the kids are killer and they're crazy and they're gonna come after us. So be ready for that. This house has two guest activated triggers. So normally I would tell you, please do not push that red button. 
However, this time, I'm gonna give you the okay and go ahead and say, all right, you can do it. We had a really good run oh through Major Squeeze. It was so fun. It is definitely like the fun house. Yeah. I feel like we got a lot of scares. You got both of the guest activated triggers, so that was cool. One is like a loud noise and one gets you wet. Yeah, and it activates some sort of, maybe a rat? that comes out inside of a cage. There's more rats in there than I thought there were. Yeah, that's my second storyline, the rats. I, I definitely would not eat the candy from there. Right? Not only does it make you turn murderous and kill people, but it's just like covered in rats. Also, they killed the health inspector. Oh yeah, we heard the story about how do they stay in business? Like, how does this, how does this keep happening? Yeah. They killed the health inspector, so there's nobody to inspect them. Right. And then we also found out that Major Sweets, the guy, like the main guy, is actually like a puppet for Miss treats yeah so she's the one when you first walk in the house she's got like the cool pink wig and like the polka dot dress and she's like the tour is this way and then later on she talks about how she's going to put all the kids in the trash compactor oh yeah she's the real one in charge so it truly is a woman's world spice up your life spice it up so that was all 10 houses now we are following olivia back to the show we haven't seen nightmare fuel yet this season so we're making our way back there to see it should be good I can't wait. As we're making our way to the show, you'll notice this clock tower here has both Sinister and Surreal's emblems on it, both of which are made up of 33s, two threes together. And if you look at the different designs, you'll see that Surreal, the teal color here, has more of like a wavy, kind of like free flowing feel to it. Whereas Sinister, the magenta color, has more of a hard edge to it. Here we go, nightmare fuel. Unfortunately, they do not allow any video taping of this show, so. In order to copy those guests still arriving, will not be videoing this. And just like that, it's over. Ladies and gentlemen, in order that we may safely reset our stage and pyrotechnics, we need everyone to please exit the stadium at this time. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> That was an extravaganza for the eyes. It was so good. So we almost didn't see it. We were almost like, right. eh, let's just skip it. We'll see it another time. But we we finished because we're on this RIP tour. We were able to go through everything so quickly and still it's still enjoy and savor everything. But we were able to do everything in such a timely uh, manner, like with ease. Yeah, oh, yeah, that we had time. So we saw the last show. I'm so glad that we didn't skip the show. Really good. I will say my only issue, and this isn't even an issue. It's like more along the lines of like wow we there's so much stuff happening that you would like blink and you'll miss it type thing you have to watch the show more than once to see everything like truly right and i will say the only my only real complaint is that that uh, stadium is so hot so and make tight. sure yeah make sure you have water if you have a fan use your fan during the show it's just it's extremely warm in there yeah i don't know how the dancers do it like they my hats off to them they're so good at what they do yeah all right, let's see what happens next. <laughs> Just making our way past Lowell's Dying on our way out of the park. The park has really slowed down. It's about 1.30 at night. The park closes at 2. Not a lot of people left in the park. So as we head into Demon Queens, this is where Surreal hangs out. And then under Surreal, there are four Demon Queens. And each Demon Queen has their own group of tormentors. So you'll see there are different monsters in here, a bunch of which looks the same, and then some that look different. Oh, we did a little spin. That was fun. So here's the demon queen right here. And another one, right? Probably one of the tormentors, because here's another one that looks the same. Yeah. Okay, so that's another demon queen right there. Oh yeah, I remember that happening. Just a little right. more Heading out. Wolf. See you later, Thank Sinister and Surreal. Thank you for letting us in. The reign of terror has only just begun. All right, so that was our trip out to Halloween Horror Nights for an RIP tour. What a night. We had a fantastic time. I think that is really one of the best ways to spend a night at Halloween Horror Nights if you have like one night. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like if And you can... they're not doing that 
premium scare night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's tough to say what's better between the two, but right. if you have one night and you want to try to get everything done and you can splurge and do an RIP tour, I would highly recommend it. And there are two options too. So with a private RIP tour, you're in total control of everything. Mm -hmm. You can do one house 50 times <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you'd like to. If you're doing a non-private RIP tour, you save some money, but you, it's like a democracy amongst the group. Yeah, everybody kind of chooses what to do. You're not, you you don't get to pick everything. Right. But we've done that too, and we had a good night as well. Yeah. So, and I think those are usually like five hours. Those are less time. Right. So we had her, uh, Olivia was our tour guide from basically 5.30 until 2 a.m. Right. So we really, really had the whole night to ourselves to do everything and we did everything we did it was awesome we did the show we did all 10 houses I, I don't know if i showed all the scare zones but we definitely went through all the scare zones we did do them yeah i had yeah. a lot of fun we got we got to try a lot of food it was a great night yeah i had a fantastic this was a great end to the opening of uh, halloween horror nights opening weekend for us yeah. i think there is still one more night yeah tomorrow night i'm but not coming back we won't night. be there for it i need to rest my tootsies <laughs> Uh, I had so much fun. I hope you guys had fun joining along. But this is definitely um, a great way to end the weekend. Yeah. So all in all, it was a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And, and now, now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.